Joining us now is George Pine, founder and CEO of Bruin Capital. The, the day after, George, you were very, uh, what, 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 what word would I call it? I, you, you, you really didn't talk much about the morality involved or all the overhang from, from all the, the fighting and the lawsuits. You just talked about what the future could look like for golf players and fans, and it was a bright future, you were painting, sort of notwithstanding uh, all of the other stuff. Do you still feel that way and still think it's going to happen? Well, I think I think it's good for the game of golf, meaning it's it's going to uh, make golf available for more fans. The players are going to make more money. More money will be invested in the game of golf. The wild card, you know, quite frankly, is Saudi Arabia, and you know where that goes and predicting where that goes is really hard to hard to predict. George, um, anti-competitive. So we we had this discussion earlier. I'm trying to figure out who who it's harming because the. the uh, the Justice Department was already looking at the PGA Tour uh, for a variety of reasons for anti-competitive behavior. Now they're going to look at this merger uh, from an anti-competitive uh, viewpoint. Who gets who gets harmed in, in, if this does go forward, if they find out a way to do it? And I don't know if that actually happens. It, it's so uh, sketchy, the whole framework right now for how it works. But who would be harmed? It's hard to say who would be harmed, really, because the players are going to make more money. There'll be more events around the world. It's hard to say who's going to be hard harmed. Now, look, in Europe, there's a concept called the Super League. It was a good concept, had great capital backing. And the political process stopped that from happening. So you have a Department of Justice investigation. You have two uh, congressional inquiries. You have a charitable status of the PGA Tour in play. And look, this is a political process. And how this plays out will, be, will come down to how the deal is structured, and the executive leadership of navigating this process, which again, Saudi Arabia to me, creates a wild card that doesn't exist in typical transactions. Not surprising the government's looking at two competitors merging, but you'd like to think you could navigate your way through that if you're the tour and live golf. And not surprising that the Saudis, you know, if they see the, the days, no matter how far you're talking, where hydrocarbons don't uh, you know, power the planet. I mean, they've got to diversify. Are they smart? I, I can't think of anything better than than sports. It's like, yeah, you can DVR, but it's not the same as live. Um, you, you can you can run commercials. I almost had to subscribe to Peacock the other day. I thought I had it free because of the uh, the ads, right. but to watch the PG to watch the early rounds of the U.S. Open, they wanted me to join. Or something. So I, I will. I think. Uh, so you get the sub subscribers. You get advertising. Sports has sports is the only, and then you got betting. I mean, there's just nothing. No no headwinds for for, uh, for sport. You're nailing it, Joe. I mean, sports is being globalized through technology, and so it makes a ton of sense that golf and other sports are globalized, and it creates new business opportunities. And look for Saudi Arabia, it's going to be a good investment. Uh, it's going to be good for their country, and they're going to have a seat at Global Golf for, for 30 years. So for them, it's a good deal. For the tour, they're accessing capital to really roll up Global Golf, be better for the players and better for the fans. So, again, there's a lot of positives. Obviously, the negative are the participants, and the, the political process is going to determine how that falls.